Welcome to the uCenter 2 video series. In this video, I will show you how to use uCenter 2's AssistNow offline support to improve the receiver's cold start time to first fix. I'm not going to go into an in-depth discussion on all aspects of AssistNow. For this, check out the AssistNow user guide web pages shown here. At this point, I expect you to have installed uCenter 2, successfully started the application, logged in and have an internet connection. I have already connected to a, to a device and performed a cold start. We can see that the time to first fix is around 32 seconds. To use AssistNow offline, begin by launching the AssistNow offline dialog. This can be found in the Tools and Services panel. Start by expanding the Settings section. Here we can see an entry containing the Assistant Server address. It is unlikely that you will need to change it. If changed, you can always set it back to the default address using the Default Server button. In order to use AssistNow offline, you will need a token. If you have one, enter it here. If you don't have a token, then select the register button. This will take you to a web page where you can apply for an evaluation token. Save any settings and collapse. The next step is to select the assistance data to request from the assistance server. First, select the type of data. Select the orbit prediction and almanac for each constellation required. See how the request string changes from my selections. The more data I select, the larger the download will be. As I'm only using GPS in my selected constellations, I will only select GPS data. Select how many days of assistance data you require. Here I have selected seven days worth. Select the resolution. With a resolution of one, the request will be for data describing the satellite orbits for each day. So the smaller the resolution, the more data is required. Now that I have made my data selections, I can download the data. Once downloaded, we can see the size of the data. The next step is to specify time and position aiding parameters, which uCenter 2 will send to the receiver with the downloaded assistance data. For time aiding, uCenter 2 will send your PC's clock time as UTC. We have to specify the accuracy of this time, and these are the options. They're described in the user guide. Here, I have selected Assume Accurate PC Time. For position aiding, uCenter 2 can send an approximate position to the receiver. This can be entered manually, or use the last known position. However, I will select none. The last step is to transfer assistance and aiding data to the receiver. For evaluation purposes, we can send a reset command. I have set this to cold to see the most dramatic time to first fix improvement. The flow control field specifies how the data is transferred to the receiver. This is described in the user guide. Selecting host will transfer the assistance data to the receiver's RAM. Finally, selecting transfer with reset and aiding will cold start the receiver and start the transfer process. A progress dialog will be displayed. If all went well, we should see a dramatically improved time to first fix. If the transfer process blocks for any reason, 
the stop button will terminate the transfer process. Finally, if you select flash, the transferred assistance data is persisted in flash memory and is not destroyed by a cold start or power cycle. To clear the assistance data from flash, select clear flash. Thanks for watching.